Yo, 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 what's up? It is the Ant-Man channel, and it is Wednesday, the 20th of November, 2013. And I have in front of me an article from Clash Daily. I had this... I had this article in front of me for like five days, but I don't know why I haven't read it. But I thought it was funny, because look who's on this article. Oh yes, die yuppie scum. <laughs> you know, it's Charles Manson, or whatever his name is. Someone that's not that important, but someone who's pretty, pretty relevant today when we're discussing uh, liberals and how they act and how they behave. So let's get into this article, Admiring Manson by Mike Adams from ClashDaily.com with Doug Giles. <sighs> Excuse me. Coffee gives me the burps. Ideas have consequences and bad ideas have bad ones. I'm often reminded of that when I have a conversation that broaches the subject of human evil and most as most of my readers already know the denial of human evil is a very real problem among younger generations of america the generation x or whatever you want to call them that's what i call them i call them the the wasted youth of the generation x these days growing up on absolute just garbage i'm sorry but i don't know what else to call it it's all garbage isn't it it's all meaningless unless you pursue something that's worth your time i mean it's all meaningless but anyways as most of my readers already know, the denial of human evil, but it da just last week, however, I had a conversation with a college student that really stopped me in my tracks. I have repro uh, reproduced it below, but not for anyone's entertainment. I have some observations that follow. I hope you'll give them careful consideration after you read the following exchange. UNC Willington student, what course do you teach at UNCW? Me. Right now, I'm teaching Law of Evidence and Trials of the Century, a course that focuses on famous American criminal trials. Student, what case are you c uh, covering now? Me, we're discussing Charles Manson. Student, I sort of admire Charles Manson. Me, what do you mean by that? Is it the murder uh, part or the racist part you admire most in Manson? Student, well, he didn't actually murder anyone. Yeah, yeah. The liberals are so like, you know, there's no black and white with liberals. It's always, it's always like justified to do something wrong. You want to justify everything. Let's justify murder. Hey, let's justify rape. Let's justify racism. It's all a liberal thing for them to be tolerant. Hey, if somebody murders somebody, hey, why are you hating on them? They're just a murderer. You know what I mean? That's the liberal way. To just cop out of everything. There's no injustice. I mean, there is no injustice, period. Because it's all just. All of it. Me. They have no standard. They have no... They don't answer to any authority. They are their ultimate authority in their flawed, sinful nature. So, of, of course, we're going down that way. Me. Actually, he did under the uh, vicarious li uh, liability rule of criminal conspiracy the act of entering a conspiracy substitutes in place of the act of killing in order to fulfill the actus reus requirement add the intent of men's rea elements and we have the two major ingredients necessary for a crime student that's just the technicality me the same thing applies to hitler certainly you would have no reservations calling hitler a murderer in a purely moral sense calling hitler a murderer doesn't rest on a technicality just because he had others carry out the acts. Student, well, the Manson family was different. They didn't follow Mace, uh, Manson's instructions. He just wanted people killed. He didn't want them butchered. Me, I won't concede that you are right about that, but I want to better understand your position. Are you saying that gratuitous murder is reprehensible, but that clean and efficient murder is admirable? Help me out here. Student, yeah, student. Manson dabbled in Buddhism, and I think that put him at peace with what he did. If he's fine with it, then that's all that matters. Mm, liberal. Me. Once again, I'm not going to accept your factual premises, but I want to get something straight. Are you referring to the Buddhist principle that evil is an illusion? Is that what you believe? Student. Silence. Okay, if you want to know what Buddhists really believe, they believe in, uh, Buddha. They believe in, uh... They believe in, what do you call it, a karma. They believe that karma and luck actually exist. But I will tell you right now, and just like Santa Claus doesn't exist, and the Easter Bunny, that there is no such thing as karma or luck. It's, it's superstition, my friend. 
And that's what happens to people when they don't believe in anything. They become superstitious about everything. You know what I mean? Pretty soon in America, we're going to be worshipping Zeus and Hermes and Mithra and Apollo. Not that we already do with Christmas and Easter and all that. But, I mean, I'm just saying, and Halloween and all these, you know, where do you think we got all these holidays that have to do with, like, you know, the solar system and certain seasons and all that? It's not like we already do it, you know what I mean? Hey, technicalities, me. Well, let me put it another way. Since it is Veterans Day, let me ask, oh yeah, this is from Veterans Day, I guess? Let me ask you to imagine the following. An American soldier goes to liberate a Nazi con concentration camp. He sees piles of bodies lying around everywhere. He smells the stench of death all around him. Are those sights and smells mere illusions, or would somebody, or would someone visiting the same camp at the same time see and smell the very same things? Student, well, I'm not going to deny the Holocaust. It certainly wasn't an illusion. And then here, here goes the professor. Then what does Manson's subsequent state of mind have to do with anything? Student, I'm not following you. Duh. Um, me. Well then, let me help you. Just imagine that you and I get really drunk and I decide to rape you. In the morning, I can't remember anything that happened. I was just too drunk to remember anything. Since I don't remember the rape, I'm totally at peace with it. I can't be upset about it if I don't remember that it happened. But didn't it really happen? Student, yes. In the scenario you described, there, there was a rape. It's funny when you start to talk about even the universe with liberals. Because it's funny because... They will get to the point where they're like, are we even here right now? Does, does this, is this just the dream? Yeah, and I love how Todd Friel, if you know who Todd Friel is, he has like one of the best arguments for that. If this isn't real, then you wouldn't mind me taking your wallet out of your back pocket, right? And then that's when it gets real. Oh, oh, oh no, yeah, I would mind, yeah. It's just a mind game with these liberals. There's no right and wrong. Don't try to, you know, the, the liberals world is about this big. It's smaller than the period on a, on, on a page, as they would try to describe the Big Bang. It started out as nothing, but as uh, about the size of, this, of a period on a page. That's, that's about the knowledge and the wisdom of a, of a liberal right there. When you try to expand their world and show them that there's so much more to what they believe, they get defensive. They get offended. You know what I mean? It's like, huh, how dare you? But anyway... Just remember that whenever you make Manson's peace of mind an issue, you insult the murder victims and their families, just as you would be insulted by someone denying your rape with similar logic. Student, okay, I don't admire Charles Manson. Yeah, you shouldn't. To say you admire a person like Charles Manson, wow. I mean, what are the kids learning in school these days? This kind of twisted moral reasoning isn't totally new among American youth. What, uh, were it so there would never would be, uh, have been a Madsen family in the first place. You know, as a new ex-con, Charles Manson went to, to hate Asbury in 1967 because he knew it was a place where morally confused young people gathered. He knew he could find runaways who were victims of abuse and who had fallen prey to addiction. He also knew he could find youths caught up in a rebellion against everything their parents had taught them. It's funny too, man. Not really funny, but kind of like sad that everyone that I know that was brought up in a, in a Catholic school is like such an atheist. Oh, no wonder. You're learning, you're learning the Bible at a Catholic church or a Catholic school. No wonder you hate everything that it stands for. Because they're probably not even teaching you anything the Bible actually tries to teach you. They're probably still trying to spank you every time you talk out in class. Or they're probably still hitting you on the hands with wooden sticks every time you're not reading your Bible. I mean... Is that really the way we should go down with, you know what I mean? I'm talking to you Catholics, by the way, not anybody else, but you Catholics out there. Is that the way that you perceive things are taught to you in the Bible? Like, that's not how it's taught, if that's how you're perceiving it. That's not the way it's taught, my friend. You're, you're, you're observing religion. You're not learning Reformed theology. You're learning religion, is what that is. The ideas Manson taught were not welcomed on college campuses in the 1960s. There were protests, to be sure, but the campuses were not yet stepped in moral or steeped in moral relativism. Our universities were still classically liberal. The li that liberalism was built on a foundation of tolerance, and by definition, true tolerance supposes a moral judgment. Relativism simply did not fit into the equation. Of course the universities have changed a lot within the last 20 years. Multicultural centers started to pop up on campuses everywhere during the early 90s. 
Unfortunately, the multicultural worldview, read cultural relativism, is no longer confined in, to those centers. New majors have popped up with strange names, which usually begin with the name of a particular cultural group and end with the word studies. Basic studies requirements in areas such as life sciences, natural sciences, and social sciences are being replaced with strange new categories. For example, my university now has a basic studies concentration requirement called living in a diverse world. We all need to be prepared for where this is going. If you think debating the question is abortion murder is frustrating, then imagine debating the question is murder is, is murder uh, really wrong? You don't have to imagine much longer. This is the direction in which we are headed. But those debates won't be with shrug or strung out teenage drug addicts on the streets of San Francisco. They will be with young adults who have college degrees. And with their multicultural education will come some degree of cultural influence. A general rule of thumb is that the trends taking place on our campuses today will be taking place in the broader culture in 20 years. The question, as always, is how the church will respond. It has merely reacted to the cultural, or the culture for far too long. That is good news for the high priests on the multicultural, uh, on the mul of multicultural di uh, diversity. Anyways, you know this is from Daily ClashDaily.com and what, whatever you know. Um, yeah, there is no right and wrong these days, and you know, in professing themselves to be wise, they have become fools, as the Bible would say. I think that the people who get who go to these liberal colleges nowadays, or any college university, I think they have like some type of higher education just because they go to some place where their you know snobby professors are telling them that. Well, if you ask me my honest opinion about why our culture has degenerated so bad, it's because you're learning. You know what Hitler said? He said, "Give me control of the books." You know, Hitler only cared about even just controlling the books that you would read. And he would, he would feel comfortable to, to put his feet up on the desk, put his hands behind his head, and be like, Oh man, I got this. If, you, if I control the education, I control everything. And that is honestly what is going on in America. We're learning evolution and all this, and we're just bashing Christianity today. Bashing it into the ground with no tolerance. Hey, let's be tolerant toward everything but Christianity. Let's blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ. Let's let's kick those that are down even more down. You know, call the needy drug addicts, not help them. You know, everything is just totally counter Christianity in our culture. But I think it has to do. If you go down to the root of the problem, it is because the education system that we have. You know pretty much given our responsibility over in the hands to liberal strangers in our communities that are teaching our children evolution. That is at the basis of it because our children are going to come home one day and say, what about the dinosaurs, mom? What about the dinosaurs, dad? What about the cavemen? And you're not going to know what to tell them because you don't study it yourself. And I'm going to, and if I had a kid, I'd tell them, you know what? The dinosaurs were here with us. They lived with us. They were created even before us. God created the dinosaurs before us, and they used to be gigantic because they never stopped growing. The oxygen used to be condensed in the atmosphere much more than it is today. Our, our atmosphere does not have that much oxygen. It's like 21% roughly. But our, our children are not learning biblical truth. They're learning liberal garbage. Humanistic, progressive, liberal sciences. Taking God out of the equation and everything. But anyways... Go out and, and learn this stuff on your own. Dinosaurs weren't prehistoric. The, 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 the word even prehistoric doesn't make any sense. What? There was history before history? That doesn't make any sense. The dinosaurs lived among us. That is a fact. Okay? I don't care what people believe in, that there was like some kind of ancient world that had dinosaurs, but we didn't live among them. That's ridiculous. There's too much evidence to, to, to suggest that we lived among dinosaurs. There were no cavemen. Duh. And you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous what kids are learning in school today. No wonder they're so confused and then they reject the Bible and say that it's nothing but Bronze Age mythology. Just regurgitating the liberal talking points. Knowledge is power, people. Get that through your head. Other than that, God bless you and have a good day.